Why does the U.S. still have spy planes when it has satellites? A viewer of mine asked me, what is the point of surveillance aircraft when we have satellites that can spot a firefly in Tokyo? This is actually something I know a little bit about. I work on software that finds bad guys, and some of my software is used in terrestrial and airborne sensors, and that software is still being used today. So, let's talk about satellites first, and since we're going to talk about rockets, let's talk about Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel your subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your money better. Now, at first, Rocket Money helped me find some subscriptions that I forgot I had, and that was pretty darn useful. And since I've quit my software job to do YouTube, there have been some days when I've been sweating until that YouTube check arrives. So one of the things that Rocket Money has helped me do is tone down my spending, because I'm not a software developer anymore that's getting paid every two weeks. And I found out that the majority of my spending was ordering fast food and going out to eat and, and going out to having a couple of cocktails. And Rocket Money really opened my eyes. I had a bump in March because I needed to pay for a flight to Australia, but I've been able to slowly bring it down with Rocket Money's visualization features. Rocket Money could also help lower your bills by negotiating with bill providers. I saved like 15% of my cell phone bill just by asking them to negotiate. So Rocket Money is working for me and it could work for you. So to save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Macbeth or click the link in the description below to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's right, rocketmoney.com slash Macbeth to get started for free. First off, when you say spy satellite, you have to understand that there are multiple types. We tend to think of imagery satellites when we think of satellites, but there are many different kinds. For example, there's signals intelligence satellites or SIGINT that intercept or monitor radio transmissions or communications or pinpoint radar emissions. There's also measurement and signature intelligence satellites, which are mass sent satellites that identify the physical characteristics of objects like thermal properties or even the kinds of chemicals the paint might give off. Now, satellites are useful, but they have a couple of problems. First off, we don't have a lot of them. In fact, we have maybe 50 to 100 satellites. The exact number of spy satellites U.S. has is classified, although there is a cottage industry of amateur astronomers who track the launches, and you can actually kind of predict where a satellite is going to go based upon the direction in which it was boosted into orbit. Uh, you can also find a spy satellite when it passes in front of a star, and you can get the orbit from the time it takes to pass in between two stars. Now, that being said, most satellites in low Earth orbit revisit the same spot every one to three days, and they're usually designed to do so at the same time every day. Now, this is done to see a differences in photographs. So, if one day there's a bunch of trucks in a motor pool, at the same time every day, suddenly there's none, you might be able to draw conclusions that the enemy is leaving to attack or whatever. And if you want persistent coverage, you need to task more satellites to pass over that area. It takes a lot of fuel to change a satellite's orbit. And in the same way that a troop buildup might be an indicator that the enemy is building up forces or information warfare, a sudden escalation in posts about an adversary might be an indicator that the enemy is getting ready to attack, seeing the adversary change the orbit of their satellites is an indicator as well. Now, satellites do have disadvantages. Quick note about orbital mechanics. A satellite in low Earth orbit can only observe a specific area for about 10 minutes before it moves out of range. Geostationary satellites, which stay above one spot, are just they're too far away for detailed surveillance. I mean, they're great for weather monitoring or communications, but not so much for detailed intelligence gathering. Uh, imagine you're trying to watch uh, a football game, but you can only peek through the window at the TV for a few seconds every hour. Yeah, you're going to gather some information about the game, but you're not going to get the complete picture. And that's what it's like relying solely on satellites. They're, they're not always where you need them to be, and you can't hover over a hot spot 
for an extended period. Satellites don't have what we call persistence. Now, persistence is key in surveillance. Aircraft like the Air Force's E-8J Stars can loiter over a battlefield for hours, providing real-time updates on enemy movements. They can track vehicles, coordinate with ground forces, and adapt to changing situations on the fly. Now, the EHJ Stars was retired recently because it is not going to survive a fight with China. And the Air Force is kind of relying on the RQ-180 to fill that gap, but getting a plane or even a drone to an area and loitering over that area is vital. Now, one of my projects that I personally worked on was called PSST, or Persistent Surveillance System Tether. This was a helium-filled balloon that would float above the battlefield for up to 30 days at a time. We would use a special acoustic sensor to detect when bad guys were firing mortar rounds and then swivel a camera toward that exact point of origin. Do a little math and we can calculate a point of impact so we know whether we should shoot it down or if we don't need to because it's gonna land in an unpopulated area. And that's just not something you can do with a satellite. The thing now is this concept of any sensor, any decider, any shooter. And I touched on this in my video about America's plan to defeat China. Any sensor literally means any sensor. Uh, NATO is really going hard at this sensor fusion. It's not just spy satellites and J-STARS, it's any sensor, literally any sensor. Multiple sensors from a drone in the air to signals intelligence to a special forces dude with a pair of binoculars to scouring social media to find a picture of an adversary who posted themselves next to a street sign. All of that stuff. We take all of that information and we feed it into the deciders who will then figure out the best effector or weapon that can create effects on a target and then we fire that weapon. So sensor fusion may be the next step in spy or surveillance plans. Now let's consider the precious nature of spy satellites as well. These are high value assets. They're expensive to build, expensive to launch, and we only have a limited number of them. If a satellite gets taken out by an anti-satellite weapon or even a stray piece of space debris, it's a pretty big loss. We are not putting another one up the next day. Planes, and by extension drones, can be deployed as needed. If one is ever lost, I mean, it's not good, but it's not as catastrophic as losing a satellite. Now, for example, since the civil war in Yemen started, the U.S. has lost about five drones, each of which cost about 30 million a piece. Not great, not horrible. And I know it sounds nuts to lose a piece of hardware that costs as much as an elementary school and just as kind of a shrug, but, but satellites, they cost more, much, much more. Yeah, I really couldn't find good data on this because a lot of it is classified, but in September of 1990, Congressional Budget Office put out a report that estimated $1.5 billion to construct a KH-11 spy satellite. And that doesn't even count the launch cost. Okay, so that, that data is like 36 years old. Maybe prices have gone down for launching and SpaceX has done a lot for that, or maybe prices have actually gone up because we're packing more tech. But it's not unreasonable to think that a spy satellite today might cost $1.5 billion. We just have no frame of reference, but you can be assured that launching anything into space is orders of magnitude more expensive than anything terrestrial. When I worked on the PSST program, it cost about $100,000 in helium to launch for a 30-day mission. The JSTARS aircraft has a 2,300 gallon fuel tank. At an average price of $3 a gallon, it's gonna cost about uh, $6,900 just to put a J-STARS in the air for 10 hours. So it's almost like the higher up you go, the more it costs. So the real answer is that what we need is a mix. We have satellites looking at things, we have planes looking at things, we have drones and sensors looking at things. We have cyber intelligence looking at things. We have information warfare dudes looking at things. And we have human intelligence, literal spies and operatives on the ground. And all of that works together to put together this intelligence picture, usually. Hey, if you want to support the channel, head on over to the Knife Hand Company and get one of my 
Ryan Macbeth in action figures. Everyone comes complete with a trading card that has my stats on the back. And thank you guys so much for watching. Oh man, I'm so bored. Christ on crutches with a permanent profile. That's because you have the wrong toys. You need a Ryan Macbeth in action figure from the Knife Hand Company. That's right, Ryan Macbeth in action figures go everywhere. Put them on your desk, your Crocs, your keychain. You can even ask Ryan advice. Ryan, why does daddy ignore me when I'm over his house for the weekend? Because your new mommy is way hotter than your old mommy. Trading cards, you get a free trading card in every box. Now that's ryan -rific. So come on down to the Knife Hand Company and get your in-action figure today. Alcoholism, cigarettes, and non-service connected hearing loss sold separately.